Hello, I'm Simon Whistler. You're watching Top 10 Net, and in the video today, the top 10 animals that made a name for themselves. Like people, not all animals are the same. Some have gone on to make a name for themselves in this world, and considering the name of this video, you can probably gather what we're going to talk about today. Whether intentional or not, probably not though, these animals have reached international recognition for one reason or another, and we are here to retell their stories. Number 10. Pablo Escobar, the coked-up bear of Kentucky Hearing about a bear that got high on cocaine isn't a story that one comes across on a regular basis. Pablo Escobar's fame began in 1985 in Georgia's Chattahoochee National Forest. That's when the infamous Andrew Carter Thornton II, aka the Cocaine Cowboy, a former narcotics officer who later went on to become a drug smuggler, dropped 40 packages of cocaine over the area and then jumped out of the plane himself. Now, unfortunately for him, he got tangled in his parachute and plummeted to his death in someone's yard in Knoxville, Tennessee. But anyway, in December that same year, police scouring the area came across 40 packages. The only problem was that they were all opened and they were all empty. Close by, they also found the body of a 175 pound black bear. The poor beast apparently engorged itself on the entire load and succumbed to an overdose. The doctor who examined him said, Its stomach was literally packed to the brim with cocaine. There isn't a mammal on the planet that could survive that. He also went on to say, Cerebral hemorrhaging, respiratory failure, hypothermia, renal failure, heart failure, stroke, you name it, that bear had it. Its taxidermied body went from being on display in the National Forest's visitor center to a warehouse to a mansion owned by another Andrew Thornton, this one a hustler from Las Vegas. The cocaine bear, as it was known back then, stayed with him until 2009 when Thornton died. After that, it was purchased by a Chinese gentleman living in Reno, and in 2012, his wife donated the body to the Kentucky Fun Mall in Lexington, where it remains to this day. Number 9. Miracle Mike the Headless Chicken Back in 1945, Lloyd Olson, a Colorado farmer, went out to the yard to bring a chicken in to have for dinner. The chicken he chose was Mike, a decision that would forever change the course of that farmer's life, as well as the life of Mike the chicken. When the axe hit the block, Lloyd realized that his aim wasn't spot on, missing the jugular vein, one of Mike's ears, and the entire brainstem. To everyone's surprise, Mike survived, and he was still able to walk, preen, peck for food, and even crow to a limited degree, of course. Instead of killing him, Lloyd decided to take care of Mike by feeding him a mixture of milk and water with an eyedropper and also giving him small corn kernels. Soon after, the failed beheading incident miracle Mike reached national fame, touring the country as part of a sideshow and even getting his picture taken by Time and Life magazines. At the height of his career, Mike was valued at somewhere over $100,000 in today's money, earning the owner roughly $4,500 per month, which is roughly $50,000 today. His career, though, it was short-lived. Roughly 18 months after his story began, Mike died during the night in a motel room after choking on a kernel that he somehow picked up off the floor. Number 8. Bobby the Wonder Dog – A Story of Long-Distance Loyalty Sometime in August of 1923, the Brazier family from Silverton, Oregon, took a trip to visit their family in Walcott, Indiana. Bobby, their two-year-old Scotch Collie English Shepherd mix, accompanied them. While there, however, Bobby was attacked by three other dogs and was chased away. The Braziers looked for him everywhere, but they couldn't find him. Heartbroken, they eventually left for home. To their complete astonishment, about six months later, in February of 1924, Bobby returned to Silverton. All mangy, dirty, scrawny, and with his nails worn down to the bone, the collie walked at least 2,251 miles through scorching deserts, flat plains, crossed rivers, and mountains, all to reunite with his family. Averaging approximately 14 miles per day, Bobby saw a meteoric rise to fame, drawing national attention and appearing in newspapers all across the country. Numerous letters began pouring in from people who encountered Bobby on his arduous journey home. He was also featured in a Ripley's Believe It or Not article several books, and also a film. He even played himself in the 1924 silent film The Call of the West. His story of loyalty is still told to this day as part of the annual children's pet parade in Silverton. Number 7. Unsinkable Sam – The Cat That Put Its Nine Lives to Good Use 
A black and white cat by the name of Oscar and later known as Unsinkable Sam started its career in Nazi Kriegsmarine and ended up in the Royal Navy during World War II. But as its byname would suggest, the story doesn't end here. He belonged to a crewman on board the Bismarck, the Nazi flagship. After a fierce naval battle in the Atlantic, the Bismarck was sunk, leaving behind only 114 survivors as well as Oscar. They were picked up by the HMS Cossack, where Oscar would live for the next several months. On November 14, 1941, a torpedo hit the Cossack, sinking it some 30 miles off the coast of Gibraltar. Remarkably, the cat survived this encounter as well, reaching shore alongside the other survivors. Now known as Unsinkable Sam, Oscar was soon transferred to the aircraft carrier HMS Arc Royale, which, alongside the HMS Cossack, was part of the battle that took down the Bismarck in the first place. Unfortunately, however, the Arc Royale was also torpedoed a bit later, and again, Unsinkable Sam, he managed to survive. He was found clinging to a floating plank, angry but quite unharmed. This was the end of Oscar's seafaring life as he found his way to the offices of the governor of Gibraltar and later in a seaman's home in Belfast. A portrait of him titled Oscar the Bismarck's Cat adorns the walls of the National Maritime Museum in Greenwich. Number 6. Lonesome George, the rarest creature in the world. Born sometime around 1910, Lonesome George was discovered back in 1971 on Pinta Island in the Galapagos. As a male Pinta Island tortoise, George was the last known individual of his species and was considered by many to be the rarest creature in the world. After his island was introduced to feral goats, the island went through a severe transformation that resulted in the endemic Pinta Island tortoises disappearing, except for that one individual, Lonesome George. Shortly after he was discovered, the lonely individual was relocated located to the Charles Darwin Research Station on Santa Cruz Island. Here, he spent the remainder of his days with the caretakers, hoping that another member of his species would be found, either on Pinter Island or in one of the world zoos. Unfortunately, however, that never happened, and all attempts at pairing him with females from other closely related subspecies failed. Eggs were produced with each batch, but none of them were viable, meaning that the Pinter Island tortoises were separated for too long, geographically and genetically, from all other similar species to be able to breed successfully. In 2012, he passed away, and his body was frozen and shipped to the American Museum of Natural History in New York to be preserved by taxidermists. Today, he can be found at the Charles Darwin Research Station as part of an exhibit that is completely dedicated to him. After his death, researchers have confirmed the existence of at least 17 other individual hybrid tortoises that are partial descendants from Lonesome George's unique species. This leads scientists to hope that there may still be other pure blood members alive somewhere else. On the information panel outside George's enclosure, it said the following, Whatever happens to the single animal, let him always remind us that the fate of all living things on Earth is in human hands. Number 5. Wojtek, the Soldier Bear the name Wojtek roughly translates to Happy Warrior, an old Slavic name that's still relatively popular in Poland today. This name was also given to a bear cub picked up by Polish POWs who left Soviet labor camps in Siberia and were relocated to Iran to form a new Polish army there during World War II. On their way to Tehran, they came across a small shepherd boy who had Wojtek in a sack after the cub's mother was shot and killed by hunters in the north of the country. The bear was raised by the newly formed 22nd Transport Company Artillery Division, Polish 2nd. Corps, becoming brothers in arms for the following several years. While growing up, Wojtek likes play fighting and boxing with his colleagues. He also drank beer and even smoked on occasion. But what Wojtek did best of all was keeping up the morale of the troops. Alongside the 22nd Company, he traveled from Iran to Iraq through Syria, Palestine, and Egypt before becoming deployed over the Mediterranean in order to take part in the Italian campaign. To get him on the transport ship, however, Wojtek had to be officially drafted into the Polish army as a private, with his own paybook, rank, and serial number. Now, he didn't receive any money, but he was granted double rations. During the infamous and bloody battle at Monte Cassino, Private Wojtek was seen hauling 100-pound ammunition crates containing artillery shells, and in recognition of his service, the 22nd Company approved its official emblem as a bear carrying an artillery shell. After the war, Wojtek, now a retired corporal, found a home in the Edinburgh Zoo in Scotland, where he spent the remainder of his days. Over the following years, until his death in 1963, he received frequent visits from his old fighting comrades. Many memorials and statues were raised in his honor, both in England and Poland. In 2011, the BBC made a documentary film about him entitled Wojtek, the Bear That Went to War. Number 4. Cecil the Lion. One life to save thousands more. 
Named after Cecil John Rhodes, a British businessman, mining magnate, and politician in South Africa who founded Rhodesia, now Zimbabwe, Cecil the Lion reached international fame after his death at the hands of an American dentist and big game hunter in 2015. Cecil was the best known animal in a national park in Zimbabwe, famous for his black fringed mane and being under continuous observation by the University of Oxford since 2008. The Minnesota dentist, who shot him with an arrow, reportedly paid $50,000 for the privilege. Now, we're not going to go into every everything that followed that incident, but basically the killing sparked international outrage over trophy hunting. Many politicians and celebrities decried the action, leading to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service placing Cecil subspecies, and another one from India, on the endangered species list. Number 3. Cherami, the pigeon behind enemy lines Cherami, which is French for dear friend, was a black Czech hen carrier pigeon who served in the U.S. Army Signal Corps in France during World War I. Cherami made a name for herself during the Meuse-Argonne Offensive, the largest U.S. operation of World War I, where over one million U.S. soldiers were deployed. It was also the deadliest campaign in U.S. history, with over 26,000 killed in action. On October 3, 1918, the 308th Battalion of the 77th Infantry Division became trapped in a small depression behind enemy lines with no food, ammunition, or easy chance of escape. Surrounded by the Germans, the so-called Lost Battalion suffered heavy losses during the first day and even began receiving friendly fire from the Allied artillery, who did not know their location. Major Charles White Whittlesey, who was in charge of the battalion, began sending runners and pigeons back to HQ, but all of them were either killed or intercepted. Jeremy was finally sent with a piece of onion skin paper attached to her leg with a message stating, We are along the road parallel to 200 76.4. Our own artillery is dropping a barrage directly on us. For heaven's sake, stop it. When the Germans saw her rising out of a bush, they began firing, and after several seconds, she was shot down. Nevertheless, with a bullet wound through the breast, one blinded eye, and her right leg hanging by a tendon, Jeremy managed to take flight once again and reach the Allied HQ, some 25 miles away. All the 194 men who were part of the Lost Battalion were saved shortly after that. For her services, she became the mascot of the Department of Services and received the French Croix de Guerre, the War Cross, as well as several other decorations. In popular culture, the carrier pigeon appeared in several books, essays, short stories, and films. Number 2. Sergeant Stubby, the most decorated war dog of World War I Found wandering the grounds of Yale University while the 102nd Infantry was training there, Stubby was a dog of uncertain breed, probably a mix of Boston Terrier and something else. One corporal took him under his care, and when it came time to ship out, Stubby went there with him. For over 18 months, he served with the 102nd in the trenches in France, warning his comrades about incoming artillery fire, poison gas attacks, and locating wounded soldiers across no man's land. He even single handedly captured a German spy, leading to the commander of the 102nd. 102nd, nominating Stubby for the rank of sergeant. Stubby also saw his fair share of wounds being injured in the chest and leg by a grenade. After the war, he became a celebrity back home, leading many parades across the country. He met with three U.S. presidents and received a gold medal from the Humane Education Society, presented to him by General John J. Pershing. In 1921, Stubby became the mascot for the Georgetown Hoyas athletics teams. After his death in 1926, he received a half-page obituary in the New York Times considerably longer than the ones made for notable people at the time. Stubby was also the subject of several books and films. There are several memorials erected in his honor, as well as a portrait at the West Haven Military Museum in Connecticut. Number 1. Harambe, 2016's Meme of the Year Back in 2016, a three-year-old boy fell into the gorilla enclosure at the Cincinnati Zoo. Harambe, one of the three gorillas in the enclosure, began dragging the boy around to the utter consternation and panic of the onlookers outside. Concerned for the boy's well-being, the zoo officials decided to shoot the gorilla. Harambe was killed one day after his 17th birthday. The entire episode was filmed by someone in the crowd and later posted online. The video went viral, sparking an international outcry and controversy over what happened. Some people called for the boy's parents or the zoo to be held accountable, while others said the right thing was done. Several vigils took place with over 3,400 people gathering to mourn Harambe at Hyde Park in London. Following his death, Harambe became subject to some of the most viral memes of 2016, attracting both progressives and conservatives alike. The public policy polling, PPP, even added the 440-pound gorilla into their polling for the U.S. presidential election. In July 2016, Harambe had 5% support, coming ahead of the Green Party's candidate, Jill Stein. In August, the Cincinnati Zoo even closed its Twitter account, as it was constantly receiving messages from internet trolls. One year later, in 2017, a new male gorilla 
Cinderella was introduced into the enclosure alongside the two females present there. The zoo is also working on a new enclosure where visitors can observe the silverback gorillas from behind safety glass. So I really hope you enjoyed that video and don't forget to subscribe to this channel for brand new videos every day of the week. Also, I've got another channel, it's called Biographics. It's biographies of notable people from the present day as well as history, from Elon Musk to Osama bin Laden. You can check it out through the icon on the screen now. But if you want something else to watch right now, why not check out another Top 10s video or a Biographics video over there on the right. And as always, thank you for watching.